Hello, welcome to the MyOIS tutorial for department administrators. During this presentation, we are going to review MyOIS as the online service center tool from the department administrator perspective, including how to access MyOIS, how to submit applications, and where to find resources. You'll start on the OIS website, which is www.ois.hit.edu, and you will click the Submit a Request button at the bottom of our page. That will bring you to the front page for MyOIS. As a department administrator, you will click Administrative Services for University Departments. This is circled here in red. Unfortunately, it is not circled on the actual website, but this is what you will choose when you enter our system. You will be asked for your username and password. Here you will enter your PIT username and password as you would to enter any other PIT system. The first time that you log in, you will be brought to the Department Access Request Form. This is how you will initially create an account in MyOIS. Please put in your information, and as soon as we receive this form from you, we will grant you access to come into our system if you are a department administrator. When you next log in to the MyOIS system, this is the page that you will be brought to. It will automatically start on the Departmental Services Overview page, which will show you your current cases, again circled here in red, and if you choose one of the options, as I have chosen Rock Panther here, in the uh, blue box for case information display, you will see that person's information, including their university ID number, their date of birth, and the last uh, act that was performed for their record. As you see here, for this particular individual, the last updated departmental e-form was the J1 Scholar Extension request. You will see under the red arrow that you can also look up your past cases so that if you have not recently accessed a scholar's record, you can do so there. Another feature of MyOIS is that you are able to look at about visa types. This will tell you about the most frequently used visa types, which at the University of Pittsburgh are J-1 visa for exchange visitors and H-1B for temporary workers. Under other visa types, you'll find some less frequently used visa types, such as E-3 for Australian temporary workers, TN, for um, Canadian and Mexican workers, and the O1, which is for extraordinary workers. And there are additional resources here as well. Another feature that we have in MyOIS is the MyOIS help section. Unfortunately, you will need to look up an international record to get into MyOIS help. And you can see here on the screen that you can always use any of our Panther family members to do so. Their, the Panther family birth dates are all January 1st, 1990, and their university ID numbers are either 79s, 78s, 76s, or 77s. Once you get into MyOIS help, you will see that there are a number of different options. We're going to go over just a few of them right now. The first is administrator responsibilities. On this page, we list out what the responsibilities are of the department administrators for OIS, um, I'm, I'm sorry, in an, acting with OIS, the employee responsibilities for international employees, and what OIS responsibilities are. There are more OIS responsibilities that you will see on the actual website. I've highlighted here the sponsor a PIT email account for the employee under administrator responsibilities. This is a requirement of all departments who host um, any international employee or scholar in their department. So if you are having an exchange visitor come to work with your department, 
who is not being paid by the university, you will still need to sponsor a PIP email account for them so that they also may interact with MyOIS in order to request various benefits of their international status. If you have any questions about this, please contact OIS and we will help you um, understand all of the advantages to taking um, your scholar and granting them an email account. This is a free service offered by the University of Pittsburgh, and so it is of no charge to your department. In addition, in MyOIS Help, there's Schedule a House Call option. This is if you are still struggling to use our system, you can always feel free to meet with an OIS staff member who will sit down with you and help you through MyOIS to get whatever questions you have answered. If you simply click on the Schedule a House Call button here, it will actually uh, bring up an email that already has Schedule a House Call as the subject line, and then you can just coordinate the best um, time to meet with an OIS staff member to help you. Under Timelines, we have what we feel like are the best um, timelines for you to submit various applications. This is in order for us to make sure that we are giving as much lead time as possible for the international employee or scholar to get uh, the visas that they need and to have the government, in the case of um, some employment applications, have them be able to get the processing time that they need to get your employee here working on time. If you have a new employee or scholar who is coming to work for your department who has not uh, been in our system before, please choose Add a New Person. As you can see here, there is an option for if you already have a university ID for this person. This is if the scholar or employee previously worked at the University of Pittsburgh, but not very recently. So if they were here uh, as a student or employee 10 to 15 years ago, and you are able to know what their university ID number is, you would put that number here. Only use this if you are certain what their number is in PeopleSoft. We cannot use their employee ID number or their Panther card number. This must be the number that they have in PeopleSoft. If you are not sure what their number is, um, but you know that they have been at the University of Pittsburgh in the past, you can always email ois at pitt.edu and we will help you find this number. Now we're going to go through some of the more frequently used uh, requests so that you can see what they look like. This is an H-1B request. Here you'll see the six different steps required to complete an H-1B application. The first step is the H-1B cover sheet. Please choose the appropriate cover sheet for the situation of your employee, and once you do so, you will find the different materials that you need to gather in order to submit your application to OIS. Once we receive your paper packet in campus mail, that is when OIS will begin your H-1B application. For the H-1B applicant information, there is this wonderful option circled here in red that says give the client access to complete this section. Because the applicant information is primarily biographical, you can email the applicant so that they can complete this application section by themselves. That way you don't have to be concerned that you're matching their spelling of their name um, or address as we need it to be. This is also an option for the J-1 intern and J-1 scholar applications. Anytime that you see this at the top of a page, you will be able to email the uh, future employee or scholar to complete that section. The departmental contact for the applicant here we ask for your billing account number, which again you'll see circled in red. When you complete this, please remember that you need to enter your full account number in order for us to process the billing for your application. Here's the information about the university position for the H-1B application. Again, 
these are questions that are entirely based upon the position itself and you should be able to work with your department to find this information. For the H-1B transfer, this is a separate request from the H-1B initial application. For initial applications for H-1Bs and for extensions, you would complete the H-1B request. If someone is transferring an H-1B, they have certain criteria that they need to meet. As you will see here, Part of this page is in red, which I have highlighted here um, with a blue box. If you see anything on MyOIS that is in red, bold font, please uh, remember to read that because it's very important if we have done everything that we can to make that stand out. For the J-1 Scholar application, as you can see here, it has a list of different sections as the H-1B request does. But the main difference here is that there are two separate applications for the different types of J-1 exchange visitors. The J-1 scholar application is for research scholars, professors, and short-term scholars. If an uh, exchange visitor who you are planning to bring to your department meets the two criteria here in this red box, please make sure that you are completing the J-1 intern application. Unfortunately, you must complete that entire application um, as a standalone application from the scholar application. So if you start to work on the J-1 scholar application and it's actually a J-1 student intern, you will have to start over. So please be careful when you select one of these options. Here you can see the J-1 intern application, which has very many of the same steps as the J-1 scholar application, but the questions are slightly different and the materials that we need to complete the application are somewhat different. In addition, you will see the J-1 intern evaluations. J-1 student interns require that evaluations are completed at the end of their program and if the program lasts more than six months, at the midpoint evaluation. Please make sure that you are coming into my OIS to complete these evaluations. When you click each of these options, there will be uh, the form that you need available to you. If your incoming scholar or intern is going to be arriving more than 30 days after the program start date on their DS 2019, Please submit this form with a new offer letter so that we can amend the program dates to better reflect when your scholar or intern will arrive. In addition, if your scholar or intern contacts you to say that they will not be participating um, in their work with your department, please let us know using this form. That way we can stop sending them reminders to check in with our office and we can accurately reflect in their governmental record what their status is. As I mentioned during about visa types, here's the section for other visa types and their requests and applications. At a later date, these might become popular enough that they are in the main departmental services menu, but for right now they are used um, very infrequently and so we have them simply in this other visa type section. If you click on any of these three requests, it will explain um, what different circumstances they are used in and whether or not they are appropriate for your situation. If your scholar or employee will be leaving the University of Pittsburgh more than 30 days before the end date on their immigration documents, please complete this departure notification. If your scholar, for example, is planning to leave two weeks before the program end date, we do not need you to complete this form, only if they will be leaving more than 30 days before their end date. If you have any questions, you can always contact the Office of International Services. Um, we are, again, in the William Pitt Union, and the easiest way to get in touch with us is always by emailing ois at pitt.edu. Thank you very much for watching our video and thank you for using MyOIS.